Have you ever heard this sound? Well, that's called an echolocation click, and it's one of the sounds whales can produce to communicate with each other and locate their prey. It's an essential part of how they're able to navigate through their environment, an environment that, as we all know, has been rapidly changing given the human impact on the planet. And these changes can affect both land and marine animals, so whales are no exception. And in order to move towards better conservation and management policies that can help protect them, we need to be able to answer questions like how many of them are there and are populations increasing or decreasing? It seems pretty simple and straightforward, right? Well, not really. It certainly is harder than it seems, and it usually involves a lot of work, money, and time. So there's an increasing need to develop more reliable and effective methods to estimate what is called abundance. Throughout the years, wildlife abundance estimation has been dominated by methods like visual observations and physical capture. But scientists have come to realize that these methods have some limitations. For example, many animals are visually cryptic, meaning they can be very hard to see, whether because of their size, color, or type of habitat they live in. An animal that is very large and lives in an open space, for instance, will certainly be easier to see than a tiny animal that lives in the deep sea. Whales aren't tiny by any means, but the fact that they live in the ocean, often deep underwater, and are widely distributed poses a big challenge when it comes to estimating their abundance, so figuring out the best and most effective ways to do so is quite important. One of the most recent methods, and the one we'll be discussing in more detail, takes advantage of the sounds we heard in the beginning of the video. Since these vocalizations are so detectable and distinguishable from all the other sounds in the ocean, scientists can use them to estimate abundance through what is called passive acoustics, a method that consists of detecting these sounds and then converting them into estimated density, which is essentially the number of individuals in a population per unit of area. Even when the traditional survey methods, like visual surveys and physical trappings are possible, it may be preferable to use passive acoustics. Why, you may ask? Well, firstly, animals that produce loud or frequent sounds can sometimes be acoustically detectable at greater distances than visually. Secondly, passive acoustic surveys do not depend on light conditions and are way less affected by weather, unlike the traditional methods we've already mentioned. And lastly, passive acoustics is more amenable to automated data collection and processing, which essentially means that we can analyze large amounts of data more efficiently, while visual surveys are usually done by human observers, which makes it more labor-intensive and error-prone. So with all of that being said, how do we exactly estimate density through passive acoustics? The first step is to deploy acoustic recorders at random locations throughout the region we are interested in estimating animal density. Together, we can assume these recorders survey a determined area that will end up being the union of a set of circles around each recorder, considering that the radius of these circles is large enough so that no call from outside of these circles can be detected. Then, we have to process these recordings. To be efficient, we often rely on automated detection and classification algorithms that detect the sounds we are looking for and produce a count that can be, for example, the number of a certain type of call detected in a sensor during a given time period, like a week or a day. Then, by dividing this count by the surveyed area and multiplying it by the right numbers, we get an equation that looks like this that enables us to get the estimated density. It may seem like a pretty simple equation, but there is actually ongoing research to better understand all the intricacies that go around estimating abundance using this method. We will need to know all about the area covered by each sensor. We will also need to know about the performance of the automated detection process and the Q production rates, which, in other words, essentially means how many sounds per unit of time does an animal of our species of interest produce. So if that sparks any interest in you, be sure to follow up on the next videos we'll be making on this topic, where we'll discuss this method a bit more in depth and everything that makes it possible to estimate animal density.